Did you get up this morning you just couldn't wait to get here? You looked over and you said, I can't wait to get to church today because I know something exciting is going to happen because I have victory in Jesus. And I know that yesterday was a busy day for a lot of us. And we, we gave that time in worship of Him. Someone said, you were washing dishes. Yeah. Boy, me and Ginger washed a lot of dishes too. We did it as unto the Lord. Somebody said, we saw a bunch of teenagers that looked like church greeters. They came and said, welcome to Jefferson First Assembly. May I assist you being seated? And as we came to church this morning, I said, Denise, we've been, we were training church greeters and didn't know it. But today we're here excited about the, the message of Jesus Christ because we have victory in Jesus.
victory in Jesus because he's alive, isn't he?
you for every promise, every truth that we can stand on because of what you have done for us. We thank you for the love of God that reveals the word of God to us, that reveals the love of Christ to us, that tells us about salvation and hope and eternal. Lord, truly today, everything that we have and everything that we are is because of you. Lord, we are the work of your hands. We are your creation. You fashioned us in your own image. You breathed a breath of life into us. So, Lord, I pray that you would teach us, Lord, to take that very breath that you have placed within us and use it to exalt your name, to glorify your name. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing when the people of God come together. And we worship the Lord together. Now, I know you can, you can be at your house or maybe even driving down the road in your vehicle and you can worship God and, and you can sense the presence of God. I'm not saying that at all. But there's something powerful that happens when those that are called of Christ come together. And we lift up our voices. And, and it's not just my voice that I hear. And, it, and it's not just this one. We hear a chorus of voices. And you may say, Pastor, you don't hear my voice because I'm not singing real loud because I can't sing well. But let me tell you something. When the redeemed of God lift up their voice, it's the most beautiful sound in the creation. Yes, like you may it. not have a voice that's ready for, for, for to be recorded, ready for the radio. That's okay. Amen. But if you have been saved by the blood of Jesus, if you're a Christian this morning, then you do have a voice that is worthy of lifting up and causing the chambers of heaven to echo because he has redeemed you. Amen? Amen. 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 Do you love Jesus today? Amen. Amen. Well, before you get too comfortable, would you go and greet someone this morning? Go and shake hands with your neighbor, hug your neck. Just love on each other for just a little bit.
you come usually come to kids' church. I need you up on the front, front and center. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I need all the boys up here, all the boys and girls up here, front and center. Quick, quick, quick. Sister Amber, where are you? Sister Amber, we're, we're doing this teams now, so is it boys against girls or just left against right? Left against right. All right. Well, we need a group of folks for this side, for the left side. Oh, my left, you're right. We need a group of folks for this side. It's girls against boys. All right. Now, girls, when you go get a bucket from this side, it goes in this one. You go, guys, you go get one from this side, it comes in here. You know how this works. Just make sure you keep your feet out of the aisle. Uh, if you don't know how it works, the folks right here, they're going to have money. They're going to have little barrels. Just go grab it. Come in your tent in here and make sure they get the barrels back. Can you all handle that? Everybody ready? One, two, three, go. Jesus All the children of the world. services now for the whole world to see and as they started doing this little chant back here uh, some of you know where that's from and I was just going no no uh, I have preacher friends they're going to call me this week and say pastor what's going on over there in Jefferson Texas so if, uh, if, I, if, uh, if I get phone calls I'm coming after you folks okay uh, just a couple of things I want to pass along to you first of all I want to say a huge thank you to both the WM's and the uh, teenagers last night uh, for hosting a wonderful couple's night out. If, uh, now I know you get here, you get tired of hearing me say this from time to time, but this is one of those things, if you missed it, you really missed a treat last night. Uh, the, uh, the ladies, first of all, the ladies had it set up, it was just absolutely gorgeous. You'll be seeing some pictures of this. It really was, it was beautiful. Yeah, everything was set up, the atmosphere was just incredible. And then the teenagers did an outstanding job of serving. I, I gotta tell you, when I, when I arrived, I even tried to mess a couple of them up. I tried to pick with them, but they were so stoic, they were so focused, and uh, they just wouldn't buy into it. And they worked hard all night. And of course, the food was excellent. I don't. I mean, everything was just wonderful. And this is something we're gonna do again. Now, not not this Saturday. Not happening this Saturday. Okay. But uh, but I did hear people when they were leaving last night trying to make breakfast reservations. <laughs> That's how good it was. 
So we, but I'll just, I, we want to say just a very special thank you to both to all the WMs, all the ladies that helped out, all the teenagers. You guys did a great job. I also want to say a special thank you for our men's ministry group. Uh, we have a number of projects that, that we need to get tackled around the church. They've been tackling these things. We've had a door over here that needed to be repaired. Uh, it's we, The door no longer needs to be repaired. It's been taken care of. We ripped it out, put a new one in there. It's in great, great shape. And then, how many of you this morning tripped on the little ledge that we had right out here in front of the door? No. Well, nobody did. There's no ledge. There's no ledge. We, we got that taken care of. And there are some other things that are on the horizon, but my hats are off to all the men that have come up here and been working hard this week to make sure that things both look nice and are safe for when you come to church. And uh, one more thing, we do have the, the leadership conference is uh, this Saturday. Uh, hopefully, you've already signed up if you're going. If not, I'm not sure that it's... I, can we? Today is it. Okay, if you want to go to the leadership conference, if you'll talk to Sister Denise, we'll get everything in place and we'll get you all the information that you need to be a part of it. Amen. Well, I think that's all the announcements that I've got. Brother Joe, would you come? Uh, Brother Randy Hall, would you come this morning so we can receive our morning tithes and offerings? Amen. Brother Joe, I'm going to ask that you would leave. Ask the Lord's blessing over our tithes and offerings, please, sir. Father God, oh, Lord God, we just love you this day. Thank you, God, for bringing us to this house. Just thank you for this house. Oh, God, we just know it's the house of God. We know that you're here. Oh, God, we just can never thank you enough for your amazing grace, Lord. And thank you for your provision. And God, now we want to give back to you, God. We just ask that you bless what we give. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I want to see him look up on his face. singers and musicians we had some uh, we had some sound issues i think we got those tweaked at least up here we got them tweaked we're still working on that but uh, i appreciate so much their time and their effort using their talents for the glory of god and, and helping us we've got a great worship atmosphere we can worship listen we can worship without the music without the instruments we can do that but uh, i enjoy having all these things at the same time we are going to go ahead and dismiss all of our kids to head back to kids church Fifth grade and under, all kids, fifth grade and under. If you're sixth grade, you need to stay in here with us. But head on back to kids' church. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 is where we're going to be this morning. So if you want to turn in your Bibles with me, Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to begin in the 10th chapter today. Ephesians chapter t uh, chapter 6, excuse me, and we're going to begin in verse number 10. This should be a very familiar text of scripture to you, uh, even if you've only been in church a handful of times in your life, I'm sure you've heard this taught from, touched on, preached from, one way or the other, if you've not studied it yourself. So if you'll stand with us as we read the word of God together, Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse number 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord. And in the strength of his might, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Mm -hmm. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Therefore, 
Take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, with all prayer and petition. Pray at all times in the spirit and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Lord Jesus, I ask for your help one more time today to preach to teach your word in spirit and in truth. I pray today, Lord, that you would come. You would open our eyes. You would open our ears. You would open our hearts today to receive from you. Lord, help us to hear and to know and to take away today what, what you have for us. Lord, I pray you would give us a revelation of who you are today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Well, I'm going to tell you where I'm going to go with this. My plan over the next couple of months is to, to preach through this passage of Scripture. Now, I've, I've taught from it before. I've preached through it before. But I want to do it a little bit differently this time in that I'm not going to necessarily go in, in order. I'm not going to necessarily start in verse number 10 and then go to verse number 11. I want to come at it from a little bit different way. Uh, sometimes... It's amazing when you study the Word of God, you can look at a passage of Scripture or a verse of Scripture that you've read a thousand times, maybe you've memorized, and all of a sudden you can look at it from a different point of view, or maybe you look at a little different translation of Scripture, and all of a sudden you see things from a way that you've never seen it before. Amen. And what I'm hoping to do as we go through this is that we see some new things. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is several reasons. Number one, I want to put a different, not a different twist necessarily but give you a different perspective. And number two, I've already got several other series that I'm working on. Uh, the, the first Sunday, the last Sunday of the month, I'm working through some different series and I don't wanna break those up. And so you're gonna be getting this in bits and pieces over the next few months as, as we meet together. And what I wanna talk about today is not the entirety of this passage of scripture, I actually wanna focus on verse number 12 today. This is, uh, this is pretty much where I'm gonna stay. But you can't really understand verse number 12 unless you look at the entire context of what Paul is telling us here. He is setting the stage for a battle, for a, a war. Who is in the war? Well, it's you and I. If you're a Christian, you're in the war. That's right. Amen. I'll even say this. If you're not a Christian, you're, you're in the war. war. Right. You're just a casualty of it at that Amen. point. Amen. Uh, if you have life in your lungs, if you are a living, breathing soul, and then you are involved in this battle. As a Christian, you began to become more acutely aware of the battle. When you try to live right in a world that is wrong, you will recognize that battle very quickly. Uh, you, can, you can turn on the TV right now, and you can watch things unfold, and you'll recognize very quickly that we do not live in a godly world. Now, don't misunderstand me. God created this world. Yes, he, did. he is still Lord over this yes, world. He is. But in his sovereignty, he is allowing some things to take place. And so we do see that, I mean, you know, if you, if you were to open up your wallet, those of you who have money, and you were to look at one of the bills in your wallet, you would see somewhere on that bill, in God we trust. And that used to mean something. Today, unfortunately, it doesn't mean much, at least in this in this country. Right. Uh, still means something to me. I still trust in God, and I know that you do. Amen. And what I want to talk to you about today for just a few moments is what I'm, I'm entitling just simply unseen powers. Unseen powers. We live in a world that is full of unseen influences. And what I hope to do when we leave today, I hope maybe to help your spiritual eyes to tune in to those things that are not seen so that you will be a more effective soldier for God. Over the coming weeks and months as we go through this, I'm hoping that we raise up an army Amen. of armed 
ready for battle, men and women for God. But today, I just want to simply draw your attention to the fact that there is an enemy out there. Right now, even in this room, there's a lot of things that are taking place that you cannot see. For example, if I had a radio in here, did anybody ever listen to the radio anymore? You know what that is, right? Uh, the younger generation doesn't really know what radio is anymore. If it's not on the phone, they don't understand that. But uh, if, you, if I brought in the radio to this room right now and I began to tune the dial, you would hear all kinds of different sounds. Uh, a lot of it, you might hear some static, and then every once in a while, you would hear a signal come through. It'd be some music of different nature, maybe a talk show. It's Sunday. You might even hear some preaching on the radio. Now, you can't hear it where you're sitting right now because all right, our ears are not tuned to be able to hear that. But just because we don't hear it doesn't mean that it's not bouncing around the room this very moment. Uh, most of you in this room now have cell phones. Right now in this room, there are cell phone signals that are bouncing all over the place. I've got one set up over here that is recording, that is streaming our services right now. And even though you can't see it, there's a signal that is going from my phone back to a router that is going somewhere else. It's going up to a satellite. And it's bouncing all over the world. I say, Pastor, I can't see those signals. Doesn't matter whether you see them or not. Amen. Doesn't change the fact Amen. that they're still there. That's right. That's good. There is, uh, if you were to walk outside, it's kind of an overcast day today, but there's ultraviolet light that comes down to our world, to our planet, from the sun. And it provides a number of different positive things for our for our life here on earth, for our bodies, uh, in, to certain degrees. Uh, at larger amounts, it actually can become detrimental to our body. You can't see them, but they're there. <coughs> right now, everything that you see is made up of atoms and molecules. I have never put my eye on an individual atom or an individual molecule. If you took chemistry back in, in high school or in college, Maybe you had powerful enough microscopes that would zoom in far enough where you could actually see those things. I've never seen them. <clears throat> Somebody said that everything's made up of atoms and molecules, and I believe them. I can't prove them otherwise. I, I mean, I can see this pulpit that is here before me. I know that it is made up of billions and billions of atoms, even though I can't see Amen. a single one of them. Amen. Are you starting to get a feel from where I'm going with this? Amen. I want to open your eyes to see that there are things that are going on around you and I that oftentimes we are just simply not aware of. Now Paul is writing about the soldier, and he's writing about the armor, and he's writing about the battle. Now what I want to focus on again is in verse number 12. And if you will, look back with me at verse number 12. I want to read it again and then talk about what we see here. He says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, this verse of Scripture is one that you have read before, you've heard before, and if you take it at face value, you just simply say, okay, I got it, and you walk on with it. If you begin to dig around in this verse a little bit, there's a lot of very interesting things that begin to come to the surface. First of all, notice the very first three words. And this is the New American Standard. If you've got a different version, it may say something to the effect of, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And it means basically the same thing. The first three words here in the New American Standard said, for our struggle, our struggle. There's an understanding here that Paul wants us to know at the very onset of this text of Scripture that you and I are involved in a struggle. We are involved in a battle. You say, Pastor, what is the battle? Well, very simply, the battle is very simply for our souls. That's all there is to it. There's a lot of other things that go Amen. into it, but the battle is really all about the souls Amen. of mankind. Amen. So today, even though you are a Christian, you are still locked in a battle. Right. There is an enemy out there that no longer has you as part of his treasure trove. Right. So the Word of God says that when you are when you become a Christian, that you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. It means that you are purchased. Because of what he did. So you, as Christians, you belong to Jesus now. You got that? If you belong to Jesus, it means two things. It means, number one, you don't belong to you anymore. And it also means that you don't belong to Satan. Now, we don't like to talk about Satan. We don't like to talk about those kind of things. It's not politically correct. I'm not very, I'm not very political 
And a lot of times I'm not correct. I'm certainly not politically correct, okay? But the truth of the Word of God tells us that there is an enemy of our souls, that his job is just very simply to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. Pastor, Amen. what does he want to steal, kill, and destroy? Anything that's of God. Anything that he can get his hands on. If it's the people of God that were created in his image, that he breathed his life into, and that he died for, then he'll do it. If it's the plan of God in our life, he will do it. If it's the plan of God in the lives of those who have yet to hear the gospel, he will do it. In other words, if God is trying to do it, then Satan is trying to stop it. Very simple. Amen. So when Paul says our struggle, he wants us to know that we are locked in that struggle. Now look what he says next. He says, first of all, what our struggle is not, is not against flesh and blood. It's not against flesh and blood. Now some of you sit in this room and say, Pastor, you weren't with me this week. I had a pretty good struggle with somebody and it was flesh and blood. <laughs> a little bit of flesh and a little bit of blood was involved too. You might actually be there. I'm not, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about fist fighting necessarily. When he says flesh and blood, he's talking about those things that are tangible. The things that we can see, feel, touch, hear. The things that we can catch with our human senses. The lost, those that are lost today, those that do not know Jesus Christ, and they're, they're living in sin. They, you pick out any random person, maybe, who is, who is running around and they're doing all kinds of, of, of sinful things according to the Word of God. Sin is not the problem necessarily. The problem is that they're lost. Amen. Because they're lost, they're sinning. Amen. Uh, That's right. Our struggle, well, let me put it this way. Let me say it this way. Satan has a remarkable way of getting our eyes on the wrong things. Amen. Get us focused on the wrong things. Amen. I believe, I don't, I don't believe that there's a demon behind every bush. If you've been in Pentecost or charismatic churches much of your life, uh, you've, you've heard that reference before. I don't believe that just because something evil is taking place or something bad is happening, let me put it that way, just because something bad is happening necessarily means that there is a devil behind it causing it Amen. to happen. Amen. And I don't believe necessarily that some, because something good happens that there's necessarily uh, a, an angel or God behind it. Amen. Uh, sometimes sometimes things happen the way they are. If I drive down the road and I, my tire is flat, right. it doesn't mean that a, that a demon was chasing me down the road with a pitchfork trying to poke holes right. in my tire. Right. Right. And if I go to the grocery store today and I buy an item and I find that it happens to be buy one, get one free, and I get one free, it doesn't necessarily mean that God was standing behind me showing me favor over the box of spaghetti. Okay, do you, you, you understand what I'm saying here? Okay, with that said, I do believe that there are things behind the scenes that do influence the things that we see, that we hear, that we touch, that we're involved in. But what Satan would like to do, he would like to like us to get focused on the things that we can see, that we can feel, that we can touch, the tangible things, the flesh and blood. Because if he can get us focused on those things, we will ignore those things that are unseen. Come on. Now he said, Come on. Why is that? Why is that so important, Pastor? What is that? What does that matter? I mean, I'm a flesh, I'm a human. I've got to focus on flesh and blood. Why is it so important that I pay attention to the things that are unseen? Well, kind of like the wind. We don't see the wind. I asked somebody this a couple of, a couple of weeks ago. I said, how many of you have ever seen the wind? There were a couple of hands went up before they realized, somebody realized I, I caught them. We don't, we don't see the wind. You see the effects yeah. of the yeah. wind, right? Yeah. Now, I've, I've, seen, I've seen birds move, I've seen trees fall, I've seen a lot of things happen that actually had nothing to do with the wind. But you cannot deny the fact that when the wind is blowing, that it affects all the things that are going on around it. In much the same way, the things that are unseen in our world, I believe, play a tremendous impact on the things that are seen. The church, for too long, has been focused on what it can see. Mm -hmm. not, what, not on what it cannot see. It, brother. Satan would have us fighting those things that we can see. Mm -hmm. But God would have us in a spiritual arena 
fighting the things that we cannot see. Paul says our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Then look what he says. And he named several things. He said rulers, powers, forces of this darkness, spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Now I read somewhere sometime back uh, that there was some person much more learned than me that looked at this and said this actually tells you that there is a hierarchy of spiritual power. That there are chief demons, there, there, there's the general demons, and then you've got lieutenants, and then you've got privates and whatever. I don't know 100%. I've never seen them. I've never talked to them. And no one's ever, been, ever given me the handbook that says here's the ranks of the demonic world. I don't know. But I can tell you this. The fact that Paul says it the way he does tells me that there is some diversity going on behind the scenes and it impacts a lot of areas in our world this morning while sunday school was going on i finished up the few things that i need to do went to my office and, and and shut the door and i turned on my computer i was just looking for some worship music and the news popped up and i found out this morning in michigan this morning while you were sitting in sunday school there was a man that was just going through somewhere around Kalamazoo, Michigan, yeah, yeah, yeah. driving around, randomly shooting people. No, there's right now they can't figure out any purpose. They cannot figure out any connection, at least of right now. There were six people that were killed oh, before God. they finally caught him this morning. Oh, yeah. And all he was doing is just driving around, Lord, be with the family. just shooting people. Now, some would say, well, there's obviously something wrong with him, and I would agree with you. But I would say there's probably more things going on behind the scenes. And I'm not talking about he has psychological issues, or maybe he was just bad seed. I think there's more that's going on behind the scenes in situations like that that would cause people to act in such a way that is evil. Now, the Word of God gives us a lot of, a lot of different... Uh, Scriptural evidence, so to speak, that backs up this idea. And you don't have to turn with me, but I just want to point a few out. If you were to go back to 2 Kings chapter 6, you'll find out that Elijah and his servant, a servant woke up one morning, looked out the tent, and looked all around on the, on the hillside, and there was an army that was surrounding them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they had come for him. They had come for Elijah. The servant went back in the tent and he began to pull up Elijah's coat and said, you got to wake up. We're in trouble, buddy. <laughs> We're in trouble. We're surrounded. And I'm paraphrasing Elijah. He didn't really talk this way, okay? But Elijah walked out and said, listen, don't worry about it. There's more going on than what you can see. <laughs> His servant was like, okay. The Bible says that Elijah prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the servant looked out and he saw a fiery army that was standing between Elijah and the impending army that was on the horizon Glory to God. attack over them. Numbers chapter 22 tells us an interesting story about a man named Balaam who was going to prophesy. He had been hired to go and prophesy against the people of God. God got a hold of him and said, you're not going to do it that way. So he took off running on his donkey. And somewhere along the way, the donkey stopped in the middle of the road. And you know the story. The donkey veered off the road, and Balaam tried to get him back. And this happened several times before he finally got off. His donkey began to beat him. Then the donkey spoke to him. Yeah. Yeah, Amazing part of the story is that Balaam actually spoke back to the donkey. Did you ever catch that? <laughs> Did, have you ever really thought about that? I know this has nothing to do with what I'm preaching, but have you really thought about that? I'm afraid if I'm riding a donkey and it starts speaking to me, my first reaction is not to have a conversation with it. My first reaction is to go and get some professional help. But the Bible says that the donkey speaks to him and eventually God opens his eyes and he realizes that there was an angel standing in the way with a sword who was going to take his life. And yet God allowed the donkey to see that angelic visitor. Luke chapter 22, verse 3 tells us that Judas sets off to betray Jesus Christ. But if you look in Luke chapter 22, verse 3, you see an interesting piece of information. The word of God says Satan himself entered into Judas. He wasn't demon possessed. He was Satan possessed. Colossians chapter 1 and Romans chapter 1 both tell us about the invisible qualities of God. God in his very nature 
is invincible. We can see the evidence of his creating power. We can see the evidence of who he is. But yet we can't see him, at least as of yet. Oh, I know that there are those that have said they've seen the glory of God and they've seen this and they've seen that. And that's fine. I'm not going to say that someone's not telling the truth. I get to see those things. I know one day I will see him face to face. Until that time, he still remains invisible to me. But it doesn't change the reality that he is dead. And in Colossians 1.16, uh, the Word of God tells us that Jesus created all those things that were both visible and Amen. invisible. And there's, there's a lot of other passages of Scripture that I can point to that tell you that there are things that are going on behind the scenes that we are often not aware of. And yet all we can oftentimes focus on are the things that are right before yeah. our very yeah. eyes. Church, we need to become a people who start paying attention to the spiritual things. I'm not talking about studying about angels, studying about demons. I'm not talking about that. And I'm certainly not talking about seeking those things out. Uh, there's only one that we're supposed to seek out, and that's Jesus. But we need to gain an understanding, or maybe I should say retain an understanding. Yes. That there are things that are going on in this world right now that are being influenced by things that are unseen. Right. And the way we're going to change those things are not through flesh and blood. That's right. Right. right now, we are getting, uh, we are approaching the time where we're going to be voting on a new president. And if you watch the news, there is a lot of things that are taking place. And I, I don't mind telling you, there's a lot of things that take place that just, that really cause me down deep to shiver. They really do. Uh, they, they really cause me to shake because I see things that are going on. And, and if you're like me, you've probably griped at the TV a time or two. You've probably shaken your finger at it. You might have even yelled at it. You might have even just turned the thing off. Can't handle this anymore. Crazy. I got to do something. I need to call my congressman. I need to write a letter. And I, and I think that's okay to do those kind of things. But I got news for you. There's something better that we can do to change the atmosphere in this world than to send a letter to Congress. Quite honestly, you send a letter to Congress, they're likely to ignore it anyway. That's what it appears happens most of the time anyway. I digress, okay? Let me get away from that. If we want to see changes take place in this world, let's, let's, let's make it a little bit smaller. We want to see things take place in Jefferson, in this church, within our own families. We're going to have to take off the gloves that are made of flesh and blood. And we're going to have to put on some gloves that are made of spirit. We're going to have to fight a different battle. We're going to have to fight a battle on our knees. Where can we get alone with God? We say, God, I've tried to fix this thing. I've tried to understand this thing. I want to get in tune with what you're doing and, and get on the same side that you are on. Unseen powers, folks. There's situations, this is where I'm going with this this morning. There's situations in some of your lives right now that you have done everything that you can to change, to manipulate, to alter, to bypass to delete and reset. You've done everything that you know to do to try to change it. Amen. But yet, it does not change. Amen. Am I right? You know what I'm talking about. And if you don't have one like that now, you've had one in the past, so you know what I'm talking about. When you try to change things in the arena of flesh and blood and nothing is happening, it should tell you something really quick. It's not going to change in the arena of flesh and blood. You're going to have to change it in the arena of the spiritual. Amen. You're going to have to get the spiritual wind blowing a different direction Amen. before you begin to see things start moving around in your life, in your family, in your church, in your city, or in your world. I see some things blowing this direction in our world today, and I don't like that. Amen. 
And I can, I can yell at it, and I can scream at it, and I can fuss, and I can point out all the things that are wrong at it. But until I get on my face before God, and I begin to cry out to Him, and I begin to ask Him to blow the wind a different direction, yeah. it's not going to change. That's right. I'm going to wear myself out, and you're going to wear yourself out. Right. Burning energy that we just simply do not have. Amen. Can I, just, can I just get down to where we are this morning? Amen. Can I do this? There's some of you in this room, you got family members that are still walking away from God, even though they know that. Amen. And I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers. You know, you know who they are. You have family members. And you've begged and pleaded with them. You've tried to tell them what's right and wrong. And moms can get away with it more than anybody else. Mom can still grab that adult by the ear and tell them. <laughs> But after a certain age, it just doesn't seem to work anymore. Maybe it's time to take that energy and channel it in a different direction. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have the conversation face to face anymore that we seem to have every three months. I'm gonna get on my face before God and start having a conversation with Him. Because there's spiritual things that are taking place, and if I get where He's at. And I start focusing my attention there. I'm going to see some things start changing out here. Yes. Amen. That's right. There's some family situations in some of your lives that are here this morning, or you have family members that are associated to you. You're the same boat. You've done everything that you know to do. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, it's it's time. It's time that we start fighting the correct fight. Amen. Satan would have us come against each other. He wants us to have the face-to-face -face type things. We don't need the face-to-face -face type things. We need to get on our face before God and get in tune with Him and seek His face. See, we're we're spiritual people. I know we're flesh and blood, but I believe if the Word of God is correct, and I believe the Word of God's correct. Uh, no one has proven to me to this day that it is incorrect. If the word of God's correct, we're not flesh and blood beings. We are spiritual beings with a flesh and blood body over us. One day this flesh and blood body is going to give out. And the spirit is going to live forever. Part of the struggle that we have as Christians is learning how to be spiritual entities that are wrapped up in a flesh and blood body. And I don't know that I can give you all the steps necessary to make that happen. But if I can just simply open your eyes today to help you understand that there are things going on around you that you are not aware of. Amen. That are influencing all the things that you see happening. Amen. Earlier this week, and I had no, I had no intentions. I, I don't mind telling you, last Sunday I had no intentions on going this direction. This was not what I was going to do. Somewhere around Tuesday or Wednesday, I was just, just in my own study time. I was looking here. I went to Ephesians 6 for some reason. Just began to read through it, and I could not get away from verse 12. This is why I'm so passionate about this this morning. And there were things that the Lord began to draw to my attention, things that, that I see in my own life, my family, and my world that I don't like. And I've tried to change those things. And in the course of in the course of having a conversation with the Lord, the Lord just basically said, Kyle, you're going about it all wrong. You're trying to change the flesh and blood. That's not where the battle is. The battle is in the spirit. And if you'll start waging war in the spiritual area, you'll start seeing things happen in the flesh and blood Amen. area. And so I'm, I'm trying, I've developed a couple of new habits this week. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but as a result of this, I just decided, okay, there are just some situations I'm going to approach a little different than that. Now, have I seen a major change? Not yet. But, you know, sometimes you have to battle a little while before you start seeing some victory come. You understand what I'm saying? We live in the fast food world. We want, we want to come down to the altar, pray for 30 seconds, have all of our problems solved, and go back and be victorious, right? It didn't happen that way. It didn't happen that way. Sometimes it takes minutes, hours, 
days, days years, weeks, years. and as some of those battles that we have, it takes years. But I'm convinced if you and I will faithfully continue to wage the spiritual war, not the physical war, but the spiritual war, we will see victory. Now, I know by the very nature of what I'm sharing you this morning that I'm going to be leaving you with a lot of questions. Because now that if, if your eyes are open, if they've been reopened today, you got to start asking the question, okay, now how do I start waging warfare? And some of it is kind of like riding a bicycle. You can tell people all day how to ride a bicycle, yeah. but the best way to learn is to hop on the thing. You're going to fall. You're going to get skinned up, but eventually you'll learn to ride it or swimming. Most people can't swim. A lot, you know, most people around the world can't swim. But best way to learn, throw somebody in a pool of water. <laughs> Don't take that too far, okay? If you take that too far, you're going to mess up the illustration. You understand what I'm saying? Instruction is one thing. Practice is something completely different. The best way to start warfare is just simply say, God, I realize now that I am involved in a spiritual battle. Would you show me how to wage spiritual war? If you'll do that, the Holy Spirit will begin to teach you how to focus on the things that are spiritual and how to pray about those things. He will lead you in there. In the coming weeks, as we go through this, I'm going to try to give you some things to help you out. But the biggest part of it is just simply understanding the world that you live in. We do live in a flesh and blood world, but the spiritual world is much, I believe, is much more real. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. One, one story, one final story I just want to share with you. Word of God tells us over in Daniel, God had given him a number of, of revelations, visions of, of who he was and what he was going to do. And This one particular one, he began to ask God, he had this vision, he began to ask God, show me what this means. You give me this vision, help me to understand it. And God didn't give him the answer. He prayed several times a day, he didn't get the answer. He prayed for two days. He prayed for a week. He prayed for two weeks. He prayed for three weeks. And it took three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then God finally, after three weeks of praying, God finally sent an angel to give him the answer. Mm -hmm. Now, you would say, praise God. It only took 21 days. But when you read the story, that's not the end of the story. The angel says to Daniel this, the moment that you set your face to understand God sent me to tell you the answer. But the word of God says that the angel was detained. The word of God says over Daniel, he was detained by something that he calls the prince, the power of Persia. Now, I don't believe for one second that that refers to a human being because we can't stop an angel. There was something spiritual going on behind the scenes that kept the angel from bringing the answer. All Daniel knew was he prayed for 21 days and it took 21 days to get the answer. He didn't see what was going on behind the scenes. I wonder how many times we began to set our face to God praying for an answer and gave up right before the answer arrived. You are spiritual beings today. You're spiritual beings. It's time for you and I to start fighting the spiritual war. Thank you. Thank Would you stand with me? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad you're <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray just very simply today.
that you would open our eyes to those spiritual things that we cannot see up here. Help us to understand and to know that we live in a world that is influenced by both the good and the evil that goes on in heavenly places. Lord, I really believe in my heart if we can grasp that thought, if we can get that one concept in our hearts and in our minds, it'll change the way we pray. It'll change the way we function. It'll change the way that we live in this world. So, Lord, I pray, I pray, God, that you would sear this on our souls today and teach us, teach us to live as spirit men and women. Lord, I know that there are those in this room today, some of them, Lord, have been facing some very serious battles. And Lord, they've been waging, they've been waging battle in the flesh and blood arena. I pray that you would help them today to begin to shift their focus, begin to transfer their energy, no longer fighting the physical part of it, the flesh and blood, the part that they can see with their eyes. Lord, I pray that you would help them begin to fight the spiritual battle. Lord, I'm convinced that most of the things that we fight in our own lives as individuals, they're really spiritual matters. It's not so much about our habits, hang-ups, and the way we've lived our life. It's spiritual things. Lord, help us today. Help us to see. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're here today and there's some situation in your life or your family and your job, something that's going on that you say, Pastor, I need to wage spiritual warfare with this. I need something to change. I need something to happen. I want you to come and stand out here in the front. I want to pray with you this morning. I don't want to I don't want to intrude on your privacy, but I want to pray with you today. I believe that God has ordained this to happen today to help you to see that it's more than what you can see, what you can hear, what you can touch. There's more going on. And the Lord is going to give you the resources. He wants to help you to find victory in your battle. If you're here today, you say, Pastor, I'm in a battle. I need victory. I want you to step out and come down to the front. I'm going to pray with you today. Now we're going to ask God to help you. You can have victory in this battle.
close in prayer. There's been there's been so many prayer requests that have been handed to me. We've we've had a lot of sickness that's taken place in the churches. We my my family's been affected by it. We're still trying to we're we're, we're not contagious. Breathe breathe easy, okay? But we're still trying to shake all the effects of it. Uh, we've had I've had several prayer uh, several prayer requests. Sister Lisa Morris was sharing with me this morning. Several in her family some very serious needs along with herself. Uh, folks, we are we're a needy people. We really are. Yeah. God is able. Yeah. God is able. And it would it would take us probably two hours to try to call out every need today. But today I want us to throw out just a very large blanket of prayer that'll cover every one of these needs. Would you pray with me this morning? Lord Jesus, Lord God, you are enough. You are enough. Today we ask you in the name of Jesus that you are pour out your spirit all across this house. Those that are here this morning, those that could not be here because of sickness, those that are homebound, those that are troubled, Father, wherever they are today, we ask you to that you would bring them to their bodies.
Thank you.